live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Citrix Synergy Atlanta 2019. Brought to you by Citrix. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of day one of Citrix Synergy 2019 from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend and we're welcoming back one of our CUBE alumni to the program today, Mary Bell Lopez, founder and principal analyst at Lopez Research. Mary Bell, great to have you back. I'm excited to be here, excited to be at Synergy. This has been a great day. The Keynotes kicked off this morning with really strong messaging around digital workspace. They gave so many stats that I think all of us can, can understand and digest. One of the things I talked about was, you know, by, by 2020, which is a few months away, as frightening as that is, 50% of the workforce is going to be mobile. We also know that this modern workforce has five different generations mm -hmm. of varying technology expertise. But one of the things that, that Keith and I really struck us this morning was that, I think it was David Henshaw that shared a number of seven trillion dollars is wasted every year right. on lack of output because the employee yeah. experiences are challenging. And if employees aren't satisfied and happy, a talent attraction retention out the window. So the future of work really is dramatically changing. Your thoughts on that, you've done a lot of research on that, and the employee experience as a catalyst for digital yeah. transformation. Well, I think if we step back and look at where technology's gone, we spent a lot of time just deploying technology, trying to digitize the business, right? That was the digital transformation. And you have to ask yourself, what's next? And I think what we've seen is that on the consumer side, we've seen this whole consumerization of uh, technology, and when you're at home, you have great services. When you're, you know, David Henschel actually talked about what you could do as a consumer versus what you can do as an employee. And you know, my personal perspective is employees are people too. There's no reason why you need to go to the office and you shouldn't have a good quality experience. But I think we've spent so much of our journey looking backward, like, okay, we have to take these things that we had before and replicate them in the new world. And now I think we're moving with digital workspaces forward. What does it look like to work in 2020 and beyond? So I'm excited about that because I think it changes how we view it to being about what should the process be? I'm always surprised whenever I talk to a security professional and I say, and I walk to them and I say, you know what? This customer wants to transfer data from uh, one research institute to another one. Yeah. What hoops <laughs> do we have to uh, uh, right. jump through? Yeah. And I'm surprised when they say none, just have them do it. Yeah. That is a very forward-thinking organization that's thought through uh, this process. But not every organization has done it. What, what did you hear either today on stage or during your experience working with Citrix that is reducing that friction between kind of the need for security and the need for frictionless work? You know, if I need to share a uh, file with uh, a community group that I'm working on, I just Go, jump, up, jump on Google or whatever and do it. Yeah. What is Citrix doing that you've seen to enable that type of frictionless employee experience? Okay, so I'd say the first thing that's happened is that technology used to be in these really discrete silos and you as an organization had to be a systems integrator to make that happen, to make it so you could seamlessly share the files. You had to figure out their identity service, your identity service, permissioning in docs, you had to have similar technologies. I think what companies like Citrix are trying to do is take all that process out, you know, do all that systems integration for you, and to actually wrap a layer of security around it at the outset, as opposed to trying to retrofit the security at the back end of it, which is typically what we've done. And so now, you're not trying to figure out how do I MacGyver five tools together <laughs> to make this happen with duct tape and sticky glue, you're basically doing things like saying, I already have a security framework in it, I have to select how much or how little security I want, but all the rest of it's just, it's baked in. I could just roll it out and have it happen. The people element though, when we talk about security, we know that people are the number one biggest yeah. threat where security is Absolutely. concerned. They'll go around the process. <laughs> or just take my password. Yeah, They're exactly. Or it's written yeah. down on that sticky note that MacGyver is going to use to you know, engineer the software. Where do you think Citrix is and what they talked about today with digital workspace security analytics in enabling right. 
the employee experience to be done in a secure fashion, especially as there's so much distribution of workloads, people, businesses, applications. So security's always been a multi-layered problem, but the problem that's been the weakest link has been the end user because you decided that you needed to have a 13 character alphanumeric, special characters, only these five kind of password environment that changes every 90 days or for different things, right? What I think we're moving now, there, the whole Citrix story around this federated identity, you know, whatever identity tools you're using, you can use those, we'll make that happen. You can get to a point where it's single sign-on. You can get to a point where it's multi-factor authentication where it's a thumbprint or a passcode or you know, choose your own adventure as an organization around how many of these you want. But it means that I as Maribel don't have to memorize 15 different things, which doesn't happen. I write them down, I put it on a sticky note, it's in my desk drawer, right? So rather than do that, we get to a much more unified environment of I remember one thing and it allows me access to say the 500 apps I might have in the organization because you found a way to authenticate me in a way that is seamless but also meaningful and secure. So when I'm on site with another employee, you know, I can simply take these devices, I can flip that over, yep. grab a pen, and start collaborating yep. with my coworker, and that's that's how ideas are formed. Talk to us about the importance of the partnership between Citrix and Microsoft with the team solution. Like, yeah. you know, we we're taking this 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 DM IM tool, marrying it with Office 365 products, and then putting collaboration around that. Where's the value Citrix is bringing to that collaboration? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of pieces of value that Citrix brings to the collaboration. One is this concept of context switching. Like how many tools do you want to go to to figure out what's going on, right? So some people are in this type of messaging, some people are in Teams, some people are in email, some, some people are in some other social network, right? There's about eight or nine different places any given person could be or be doing work with somebody because we all have preferences, right? So the question is, if you're someone like Citrix, how do you help somebody unify that in a way that they can see all of their different touch points? And Teams is becoming an increasingly growing part of that touch point community, right? People like that instant on access to other individuals, right? It, it's become part of our nature in consumers, it's now part of our nature in business. But that doesn't mean that you might also not want to be looking at your Outlook email. It doesn't mean that there might be something that's in Salesforce that you also need to be cognizant of. So what you look at someone like Citrus is doing is helping you unify that with the tools you already have so you can leverage the best of all of them, but they're not so disparate that you can't figure out what's going on. When you're having conversations with customers in different industries, where is the employee experience yeah. and the intelligence needed to drive a really solid employee experience? Where is that in terms of a, a, a C-suite imperative? So if you asked me that a year ago, I would say it wasn't as high on the list as it is today. I think what's happened in the past year is that uh, we did a survey actually and 78% of the C-suite put it in the top three for their list of imperatives. Uh, security actually being obviously one of the key issues of our generation, it seems. Uh, but in addition to that, people really get now that talent is the competitive differentiation. So employee experience is related to talent. And employee experience is, it's actually many things. You can define it extremely broadly from the time that you are engaging with a prospect all the way through the time that they become an alumni of the corporation. So employee experience isn't this like one and done bounded thing. It's not just when you're an employee, it's not just when you're in recruiting. Uh, but in general, corporations really get this and now they're looking for a way to make this happen. And I think there's lots of ways we can make this happen. One of the biggest things that I think is happening is the concept of not just redoing our old experiences, but looking at what work should look like today. And that's what are the devices that they're using? You know, are they own devices or not? Uh, what their physical workspaces look like? How you integrate technology in buildings? Uh, what does your digital workspace look like? And not just for employees, but we also have this new gig economy that we're looking at as well. So if you really want talent, you know, part of the employee experience might be that 
they're only going to be an employee for three months. How do you make sure you get them on board day one, that they can do their job effectively with all the tools they need, and then when it's time for them to leave, you can turn them off so they can secure your data and content, and be really confident that they didn't take the keys to the kingdom with them, right? So I think that employee experience is a critical board level topic, and I think the biggest challenge now is figuring out how do we define that and what tools do we need in the organization to make that happen. So as I look at kind of this alumni network married with the gig economy, I'm yeah. a former PwC guy, they constantly send me opportunities like, oh, you know what, we, sure, you, you don't want to come back and get burnt out again, but there's always opportunities to come back and project do uh, yeah. projects. Yeah. You know, as talent gets, in my opinion, more and more scarce, uh, especially specialized talent around AI, machine learning, application development, process automation, et cetera, there's going to be a need to go out and extend your uh, search for uh, folks around the globe to do that work. When you think about partnerships, and uh, uh, whether it's technology partnerships, partnership with staffing companies, partnerships uh, with social media, what are some of the uh, trends that are kind of arranging or are emerging as companies look to globalize their workload force? Yeah, well I, I think you picked up on one of them. Uh, one of them is being, well if I step back for a second, I'd say we have to think of location independence. So a, a huge trend, particularly in large metros where talent is very competitive, is people start to think more broadly about are there new locations that we want to create offices in? If there aren't new locations, are there just easier ways to create a remote work environment where people can work at home? And, and there's two types of remote work. There's remote work like I want to work at home maybe two days a week because the commute's terrible. Mm -hmm. Or there's remote work like I never go to an office. And both of those have to be first class citizens and both of them also have to foster a sense of community because part of the challenge around that is what we call the water cooler problem. You know, How do you give people enough technology that they feel like they're almost in the room with people, that they have the right access to people and information wherever they are, and that they are part of an environment and a culture, because I think that's really important. So we're seeing location independence being one of the huge trends we're looking at. We're also seeing that trend of, um, they can come and they can go. They might be what I call the, the part-time employee trend. We're also seeing a trend of use the tool you want. You know, it, there are many ways you can get a job done. You might be a PC, a Mac, a Surface person. Uh, you might want to use uh, big phones, small phones. Uh, all these things don't necessarily need to be company owned as well, so how do you give people the tools they want? People are very specific about what collaboration suites they want, what document storage they want. Uh, what SaaS applications they want, you know, and teams will pick these types of things. So it's really important when people are building the next generation of technology that they allow enough flexibility for choice so that you can actually say, okay, you want to use these devices, you want to use these SaaS apps, we can find a way to manage and secure that and let you work the way you want to work because that's attractive to you and that will keep you employed with us. When you're having those conversations with businesses about the location independence, which I fully support, I've been doing it for a long time, there's a cultural impact there. Whether yes. it's a startup that's been around for five years or a legacy corporation like Citrix that's been around for 30, how often does that cultural transformation come up in your customer conversations? And similar to my question about where Em employee experiences within the C-suite, are you seeing yeah. cultural transformation also elevate to, hey, in order to be really competitive and really successful, we've got to modify our culture maybe to, be, to embrace, not just more technologies, but these different ways of working. So, I've been talking to a lot of organizations about what does the concept of diversity mean? And diversity means a lot of different things. Uh, diversity means diversity of geography, diversity means uh, diversity of opinions, diversity means diversity of technology. Um, it is changing the way you think about culture from being everybody has to be in the building. It's also diversity in terms of how you evaluate an employee's worth. So one of the big cultural changes that people have been talking about is it they felt it was easier when you were sitting in a building from nine to five to know that you were working. 
And now people are working many different hours in many different geographies. And I think the big rethink for organizations is what is the value that you're bringing and what are the metrics that you're impacting and how do I focus on that as opposed to you worked 3.2 hours today because your VPN connection said so. That thinking has to go away. It has to be moved into a meritocracy but it also has to be very much structured of like, we really need to know what we're trying to do and trying to accomplish so we can create the right goals for our employees. And I think that that concept of going from, I saw you, so therefore you must be working, to you impacted our net promoter score, you impacted sales, you know, something that you can say this was the business value of employees so that they feel that they have worth and you understand their worth is actually a real big change in future work that's not about the technology. Technology can enable you to get there, but it's really about a rethink of how we do business. Ah, exciting, I wish we had more time, but Mary Bell, yeah. thank you for joining Keith and me and sharing your insights and educating us on even just the different ways of looking at diversity. So interesting, thank you. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. For Keith Townsend, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE live from Citrix Synergy, day one from Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks for watching. <laughs>